اليوم راح نبدي بمحاضرات الميل ريبرودكتيف سيستم راح ناخذها على محاضرتين اليوم خلص ان شاء الله The male reproductive system is divided into four main parts. اللي هو first the testes and the genital ducts that transport the sperms produced within the testes and the accessory glands. اللي هي three major glands: the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the vulvo-urethral glands. And the last part, اللي هو penis. The major functions of the male reproductive system is the production of sperms, اللي هو أكيد important for the reproduction, main reproduction function. Also, there is secretion of hormones, اللي هو testosterone, that is essential for the process of spermatogenesis اللي هي spermatogenesis هي the process of sperm formation referred to as spermatogenesis also the testosterone act on the fetal sexual differentiation the differentiation or development of the male sexual organs during the intrauterine life and control the Secretion of gonadotrophin from the pituitary glands, the FSH and LH. Also, a metabolite of testosterone, اللي هو dihydrotestosterone, will uh, uh, act on the during puberty, will be elevated and act on the development of the secondary sexual characteristics of the male, اللي هي a development of body hair, facial hair, deepening of the voice. Starting first with the first and most important part, testis, which is the site of sperm formation. Each testis is surrounded by an outer capsule, dense capsule, called the tunica ergogenia. And the posterior thickening of the tunica ergogenia is called mediastinum testis, from which here septa will pass from the tunica ergogenia will divide the testis into pyramidal compartments referred to as testicular lobules. And these testicular lobules, my structures contain the Seminiferous tubules, these tertius tubules that represent the site for the development of sperms. Each lobule, now a section, the seminiferous tubules, the testis, showing how these structures are the adjacent closely. Adjacent in here, some nephros tubules, benatomadi, who are the spares interstitial tissue. The spares interstitial tissue that is intervening between the adjacent some nephros tubules contain special cells in here, interstitial cells are called Leydig cells. These cells are very important because they are responsible for the production of testosterone is now responsible for the sexual differentiation. Within these tubules, have the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. Show for the lumen, have the lining epithelium. The lining epithelium of the seminiferous tubules is called the spermatogenic epithelium. It is where germ cells will develop from starting from the base until it reach full maturity here into the lumen releasing the sperms into the tubular lumen. The development of the testis starts from the retroperitoneum during the intrauterine life. So its original, original location is within the abdominal cavity. 
and during the fetal development it will start to migrate until it reach its position outside the body within the scrotum at the end of the spermatic cords this migration is critical for the sperm survival because intra-abdominal position or within the body the temperature is considered high for the sperm survival here normal body temperature is 37 while the permissive temperature the temperature that allow the sperm survival is only when it reaches to the outside into the scrotum's normal position here 34 about 34 centigrade during this process of migration the uh, testes carry with it a serosal sac which is derived from the peritoneum it is called the tunica vaginalis the innermost layer the dense connective capsule the albuginia tunica albuginia and the tunica albuginia is surrounded by two layers of connective tissue a visceral layer of tunica vaginalis and outer layer or parietal layer of tunica vaginalis. Again, uh, this uh, migration is important for testicular survival and without this migration, the testis will undergo atrophy in certain conditions called undescendant testis, in a failure of normal descendants or migration of the testis into its position when it remain in the any site of the um, uh, travel of the testis from the retroperitoneum to the sucrotum if there is any halt to this migration at any site can affect the sperm development ending with testicular atrophy condition is known as undescendant testis The permissive temperature, as I mentioned, here 34 centigrade is maintained by the um, piniform venous plexus, here venous plexus that surround and cool the arterial blood and evaporation of the sweat from the sucrotum here skin surrounding the testis. In addition, certain muscles, here dartos muscle contraction will help to move the testis uh, beyond or close to the body according to the requirement. This is at lower magnification. We show the seminiferous tubules and the interstitial tissue. This picture at higher magnification. We show the seminiferous tubule. This is the connective tissue lining, and this is an adjacent, another seminiferous tubule, dialogism, and uh, this is the interstitial tissue who was sparse and located between the adjacent seminiferous tubules. The interstitial tissue has blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, fibroblast, and the most important, ileaginal interstitial cells, and they are endocrine, cells responsible for the production of testosterone under the influence of LH. The Leydig cells are large with round central large nucleus and abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. The adjacent uh, tubule, seminiferous tubule, here we see Spermatogenic epithelium, which is the germinal epithelium, which is the basal layer, and showing the spermatogenic cells at various stages of development, starting from spermatogonia, and then develop into primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, not shown in this section. And finally, the spermatids, but then it will be has spermatid further differentiation development until it reaches the fully developed sperm, which is called spermatozoa. 
spermatozoa will be released here into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules, which is gonna the site of the sperm production and the rate of sperm production who are 200 million sperm per day. This is in the young adult with an average of about 250 to 1,000 tubules in the testicular lobules. Each of these lobules, uh, this structure is going to be pyramidal or triangular compartments divided by extensions from tunica albuginea, contain or linked together here, and ducts from each. Some nephros tubules are linked together here by the straight tubule. And here I am collecting ducts and then into the reti testis here, which are interconnecting channels with epithelial lining located within the mediastinal testis. This part of the mediastinum is called mediastinal surface or mediastinum te testis that contain these ducts that's called as reti testis. The reti testis will connect the some nephros tubules into the epididymis through the efferent ductules. So, start with the some nephros tubules, that the straight tubules, el reti testis, el efferent ductules, and then the epididymis. Each some nephros tubule gonna lining hua complex stratified epithelium, germinal epithelium, or spermatogenic epithelium. Here we will see the section on the part of tubule, the adjacent part. This higher magnification of the tubule, the part of the part of the tubule. We will see the germinal epithelium. In the adjacent tubules, other who are lumen in this tubule. This tissue here is the interstitial tissue that lie between those two adjacent seminiferous tubules. The basement membrane of the seminiferous tubules is covered by fibrous tissue, fibrous connective tissue, and the innermost layer of the seminiferous tubules contain flat muscle-like cells. Here are myoid cells. This is help to give contraction by weak contractions in the tubules. The germinal epithelium that line the tubules, starting from the innermost part, here is spermatogonia. And Sartori cells. The spermatogonia are large and non-dividing cells. Function is supportive and nutritive function to the developing sperms, but they are non-dividing. They usually located here at the base and show an extension until the luminal surface. So they support all the stages of spermatogenic development. And the second part, of the germinal epithelium, the dividing cells of the spermatogenic lineage, the spermatogonia. The cells of the spermatogenic lineage will form concentric layers, about four concentric layers that run along the lining epithelium. And the process of the development starting from the spermatogonia until the fully developed sperm, here spermatozoa, take about 10 weeks. And the process is referred as spermatogenesis. Nana genetic DB spermatogonia will develop into the primary spermatocytes. And now show section mainly is primary spermatocytes, in here largest cell of the spermatocytic. Are spermatogenic cells 
and the spermato primary spermatocyte change into secondary spermatocyte, but they are short-lived, so usually not seen in the section. The secondary spermatocytes rapidly change after their formation into the spermatids, and then the spermatid change at stages of differentiation until it reach the fully developed sperm. واضح لحد هسه؟ عندكم سؤال؟ طلاب واضح؟ نعم جدا ماشي. The process of spermatogenesis اللي هي قلنا the process of sperm genesis or sperm formation begin at puberty under hormonal influence. Releasing L hormones, L FSH and LH released from pituitary gland to act on the testes, stimulating the process of sperm formation. The spermatogenesis starts from the most primitive, which is the spermatogonua, which is a stem cell or progenitor cell, which is the or the other lineages of the or the daughter cells for the process of spermatogenesis. The spermatogonia is a small round with dark oval nucleus that is located located at the basal corner within the epithelial wall. So the spermatogonia is in basal location. And next to the spermatogonia is usually the Sertoli cells. They are closely related. The spermatogonia is containing a full set of chromosomes, and you have 46 chromosomes, and therefore it's called a diploid cell. Often in the cells are two types. Diploid, you have a full set of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, and haploid cells, you a one set of chromosomes اللي هو 23 set of chromosomes عادة هذه موجودة بال fully developed sperm will ovum sperm and ovum having the half uh, or uh, not full not the full set اللي هو 23 and again during fertilization the fusion of the sperm and ovum will restore the normal chromosomal content اللي هو 46 chromosomes the spermatogonia here will divide mitotically to give two cells. The cell is a new stem cell, cell This is important to maintain the stem cell pool for the future process of spermatogenesis. And another cell is a type A spermatogonia. The type A spermatogonia it can more pale and ovoid. Other than the cell climate can more mitotically active or increasing in the uh, active in the division. The nuclei usually are more pale or open chromatin. The type A spermatogonia will transform into another type called type B spermatogonia, which is more oval in shape and more pale in color nuclei, which will pass into the final mitotic division in the primary spermatocytes. Until this stage, it is still 46 chromosomes. The primary spermatocyte is a diploid cell with 46 chromosomes. The cell is containing spherical nuclei with eochromatic Content. Eochromatic cells are two types, eochromatic and heterochromatic. The mitotically active cells, usually containing an eochromatic, it can pale staining DNA content, while the heterochromatic means that it is dark staining or inactive in division. Soon after the formation of the primary spermatocyte, the diploid cell, it will enter the first meiotic division. 
this division lasts for three weeks. It is a long time, therefore most of the sections اللي نشوفها بالسمنفرس تيوبي ونشوف أغلبها لبرايمري سبرماتوسايت هذه اللي اشتر عليها بالسام هذه كلها برايمري سبرماتوسايت These are the cells that will enter the first meiotic division giving two haploid cells the 23 chromosome and a half set of the chromosomes and giving rise to the secondary spermatocyte the haploid cells the secondary spermatocytes are rare because they last for short period short-lived and rapidly entering the second meiotic division giving also two haploid cells and here the spermatids The, this diagram showing the steps in the spermatogenesis, the located the most basal layer, which is stem cell spermatogonia, another spermatogonia, and a primary spermatocyte, and primary spermatocyte with 46 chromosomes enter the first somatic division, Ginnahnana lasts for three weeks, until it end in the formation of secondary spermatocytes here now haploid cells with 23 chromosomes the secondary spermatocytes soon after their formation they enter or they change into the spermatids by passing through the second meiotic division until the this stage it was spermatid the spermatids start to differentiate until it form the fully developed sperm, the spermatogonia. This stage from the spermatid until the sperm is called the spermiogenesis, the last step of spermatogenesis. And during this stage, only differentiation occurs with no cell division. This whole process occur in close association with the Sertoli cells and Ginna has essential function in the spermatogenesis by physical support, providing physical support to all the stages of development, non until full development, so we have released from the Sertoli cells. And the cells here are all lie within invaginations of the Sertoli cells, they extend from the basal surface until the luminal surface, dividing the compartment into basal compartment and a luminal compartment. Again, the last step of spermatogenesis is here is spermiogenesis, which is a differentiation phase. And it is a sensitive temperature sensitive process that will change the spermatid until fully mature sperms in the spermatozoa. Now we show the steps of differentiation from the spermatid until the fully developed spermatozoa. The changes that involve the spermatid including the formation of a chromosome and the whole structure located at the tip of the head of the sperm. This acrosome is particularly important because it contains enzymes that help to break down the ovum during the process of fertilization. Also, the nucleus changes nana from ovoid into condensed and elongated nucleus, shedding of most of the cytoplasm and formation of the flagellum, who are important for the sperm motility. Sertoli cells, which are tall columnar epithelial cells, it is large and non-dividing cells. The major function is supportive, physically supporting the spermatogenic epithelial cells and giving nourishment.
This section show this is the spermatogenic epithelium at various stages of development, starting from here, the spermatogonia, and then these are the spermatocytes, Guinness secondary spermatocytes. It does not appear in the section because they don't last long and rapidly change into the spermatids, how the spermatids at different stages of development, but then fully developing stage of spermatozoa will be released by the end into the lumen. This is the nucleus of the Sartoli cells, the Guinea supportive cell, with characteristic prominent nucleoli and eochromatic open chromatin. The usually the uh, Sartoli cell occupy the entire surface from the basal the basal surface until the it reach into the lumen so it accompany all the stages of spermatogenic development nana bil rotin h and e staining and yeah, without special staining other than ma shuf the processes or the cytoplasm lil sartoli cell na shuf the nucleus will nucleolus هنا أنا بالدياجرام بشكل أوضح إنه موضح إن this is the cell position within the seminiferous tubule. The major functions of Sartoli cell in that it is supportive, protective, and nutritive function during the development of sperms. And the Sartoli cell will isolate the sperms from the plasma by the formation of physical barrier. The sperms are unique cells and without separation from the exposure to the plasma, it can be recognized and attacked by the immune system. So this separation or isolation is created by the Sartoli cells. And this physical barrier is called the blood testicular barrier. In addition, it also produce has an endocrine and exocrine function by secreting water that is carried with the sperms out of the testis production of nutrients since the uh, sperms cannot contact the plasma therefore the nutrient is supplied instead by the Sartoli cells themselves the production of nutrients and androgen binding protein this is a special type of protein that bind and concentrate testosterone. Also, it can secrete the inhibin that have a negative feedback inhibition on the pituitary gland to inhibit the secretion of SH and LH. And the final function is the phagocytosis of the excess cytoplasm. Again, the final step are one of the uh, major changes in the uh, spermiogenesis who are shedding most of the cytoplasm by the developing sperms. This cytoplasm that is shed during this process will be phagocytosed by the Sartori cells. next part, genital ducts. أكو سؤال هل سبرماتوجينيسيس طلاب سمعوني سمعوني يا ما سمعوني ماكو سؤال واضح اوكي نبدي بالنكس بارت اللي هو الجينيتال داكت Genital ducts are the ducts or tubules that will transport the sperms that are formed in the testis. And now I'll show this diagram showing the uh, seminiferous tubules. Now I'm going to have a compartment here, testicular lobules. Bottom down shape. Well, seminiferous tubules 
connected together now by the straight tubule and then reticestus and efferent ducts. How the three parts? The first three parts, three ducts, are here located within the testis. Therefore, it's referred as the intratesticular ducts. They all carry the sperms and liquid that is formed within the seminiferous tubules into the duct of the epididymis. هذا يبدي عندنا ال excretory genital duct اللي هو ال epididymis ال vas deferens هنا أنا أو ال ductus deferens اللي هو long tube يصعد بعدين ينزل بعدين راح نشوف another picture إلى أن يوصل إلى ال urethra ال intratesticular اللي هو ال straight tubules which are short tubules with only sertoli cell lining and then these citrate tubules will empty into this interconnecting network or channels testis, which are lined by cuboidal epithelial cells with supportive connective tissue in the surrounding and the stinum. The reti testis here will drain into these ducts, اللي هي efferent ductules. Efferent ductules are lined by unusual epithelium, اللي هو alternating cuboidal and columnar with a scalloping appearance. هنا أنا عدنا الريتيتستس, اللي هي قلنا lining simple cuboidal epithelium. الإفرن ductule اللي هو Specialized scalloped appearance epithelium it can be simple cuboidal here and conciliated and adjacent columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium the alternating non-ciliated simple cuboidal and tall or ciliated columnar epithelial cells اللي عليها الاسم هذه هي ال ciliated columnar epithelial cells and this alternating appearance will create this called the scalloped appearance of efferent ductules. The simple cuboidal epithelium here function to absorb some of the fluid from the lumen with the fluid that accompany the sperm here and this will help to create a current or fluid flow which will help the sperm to pass passively from the efferent ductule into the epididymis. This movement is also aided by the surrounding smooth muscle layer. The next part is the excretory duct starting from the epididymis. The first part of the extra testicular or excretory duct, اللي هو قلنا epididymis, نرجع هنا نسميه tubules, straight tubules, the reticestis, هنا نلقينا the efferent ductules lined by unusual epithelium, بعدين تبدي بال epididymis, the head. This is the body of the epididymis, and this is the tail. The epididymis is long and coiled duct with surrounding connective tissue. The head here is where the efferent ductules enter. The body is where the further modification within the sperm occurs. This modification here is essential for the sperm function. And finally, it reaches here into the tail of the epididymis where the sperms are stored until the time of ejaculation. This is a section of the epididymis. I show the ducts here with the uh, pseudo-stratified polyaminar epithelium lining. The type of epithelium here is called principal epithelial cells that have long stereocilia. Stereocilia are long and non-motile cilia with smaller basally located round cells. The process of passage of sperms through the epididymis will last up to four 
weeks. And the modification that is mentioned before is by integration of certain components secreted by the columnar epithelial cells. And this is essential for fertilization. Without the modification within the epididymis, fertilization will not occur. Also, the duct is lined by circular smooth muscle at the tail region. This is the contraction from these muscles also help in the movement of sperms within the ducts. The second part of the excretory duct called the ductus deferens or vas deferens, which is a long straight tube by the tail of the epididymis and it ascend and then goes around here around the site of entry or insertion of the ureter into the bladder and then here the last part of the vas deferens is um, dilated highly tortuous part is called ampulla of the vas deferens the ampulla of vas deferens with the duct from the adjacent gland in here seminal vesicle together will join to open into the ejaculatory duct which will empty into the prostatic urethra. The, uh, prost the urethra generally is divided into three parts in male, the uh, intratesticular part that runs through the center of the prostate called the prostatic urethra, short second part who are called membranous urethra and the final part that run through the penis and called the penile urethra. The characteristic feature of the vas difference that it has a very thick muscular wall and small lumen. This thick muscular wall help in the contraction called the peristaltic movement. This will help to move the sperms from the epididymis until it reaches the ejaculatory duct. Also, the vas difference form part of spermatic cord. This is the spermatic cord. It covers mainly men L vas difference or ductus difference and testicular artery and a venous plexus is here, pampiniform plexus is going to help to cool down the temperature and help the sperm survival. The ductus difference is also containing slightly folded mucosa, lamina propria, the muscular, thick muscular wall consists of inner and outer longitudinal and middle circular layer. The lining epithelial cells here is pseudo-stratified epithelium. And this is special staining, uh, show the elastic fibers the feature of ductus deferens who are a uh, richness in the elastic fibers and fibrous tissue. This is special stain, a trichrome stain, will highlight the collagen fibers with bluish color. The third part is the accessory glands. Here again, three main glands, seminal vesicles prostate gland and the bulbourethral glands. Seminal vesicles and the bulbourethral glands are paired, one on each side and one prostate gland. The function of these glands is the production of secretion that is accompany these sperms from the liquid part of the ejaculate. The sperms with the accompanying fluid is called the semen, which is essential for the reproduction. The two seminal vesicles on both sides are highly tortuous tubes, surrounded or enclosed within connective tissue, and 
gland has characteristic lining mucosa. This picture shows the lining mucosa of the epididymis, which is containing a numerous thin complex folds that fill most of the lumen. The lining here is simple or pseudo-stratified cholionic epithelium that is rich in secretory granules since the seminal vesicle is providing the major secretions of the ejaculate. The lamina propria, also containing elastic fibers and surrounding smooth muscle consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal. The secretions produced by the seminal vesicle containing fructose, which is important for the activity of the sperm, provide an energy source for the sperm. Prostaglandins that stimulate the activity within the female reproductive system and fibrinogen that coagulate the semen after the ejaculation. The second part is the prostate gland, which is dense gland, measure two by three by four centimeter, and it's around the urethra below the bladder. Now I'll show the prostate gland, the position at the base of the bladder, Nana, this is the urinary bladder. This is the base surrounding the bladder neck. The prostate gland is divided into an average of about 40 tubular acinar glands. This is the or tubular acinar structures. The glands are linked or connected together by these ducts and they lie within a dense fibromuscular stroma. The ducts from all these glands here are linked together until they open into the prostatic urethra here. Prostatic urethra run within the center of the prostate gland and it divided into three major zones. The outer and the largest zone in here, peripheral zone, contain most of those glands represent 70 percent and the middle part it is called the central zone and innermost part the transitional zone is here surrounding the prostatic urethra the lining epithelium for the prostatic gland is simple or pseudostratified coleomenar epithelium and it produces also fluid that contain mixture of contents, enzymes, glycoproteins, and prostaglandins. These are stored until the time of ejaculation. One of the features of the uh, gland contents in here would be normal prostate gland is called the corpora amylacea. This is at low magnification and this is at high magnification, which are produced by the glands within the lumen of the glands appear as small spherical secretion could be partially calcified. The a product of the prostate gland, an important product is called the prostatic specific antigen and this helps to liquefy the semen Normally, only a small amount of this antigen will leak and detect it into the circulation when the level of the prostatic specific antigen is elevated, it can indicate an underlying prostatic pathology such as prostatic carcinoma or inflammation of the prostate, yeah, prostatitis. The last part of the glands, the bulbourethral glands. Have the seminal vesicle, open into ejaculatory duct, and then into the prostatic urethra in the center of the prostate. And then here, this is the, again, the first part, prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and then this is the penile urethra. The 
Bulbar urethral glands are small herd glands located with the urogenital diaphragm. اللي هو muscular diaphragm formed by muscles. Their size is about three to five millimeter, and they contain also tubular acinar glands with mucus secretion. The function of these glands is to produce mucus secretions that pass into the urethra and help for lubrication and preparation for the passage of sperm during ejaculation. The final part here is the penis, which consists of cylindrical structures, three cylindrical masses, the erectile tissue, consists of two dorsal corpora cavernosum, and one ventral here, corpus spongiosum. that surround the urethra. Corpus spongiosum here is the structure surround the urethra. And the corpus spongiosum, the third part or the ventral part of the rectal tissue will end into the glans penis, the tip of the penis. هنا أنا السكشن للبينس نشوف ال dorsally located to erectile masses هنا اللي هي corpora cavernosa with each containing central artery and the ventral corpus spongiosum that contain centrally running the penile urethra the erectile tissue is actually a, a vascular tissue, high vascular tissue. Erection is produced by the changes within the blood filling of the vascular spaces in here, venous, cavernous spaces. Hadi, the spaces here, Ebara, and venous. Venous spaces lined by endothelium with separated by smooth muscles and connective tissue. And erection occur by blood filling of all these three spaces during erection. The penile urethra, this structure, is lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which will change into, at the site of the glands, into stratified sequamus, which is continuous with the surrounding skin, from glands surrounded by skin, with skin lining hua, stratified sequamous epithelium, and the last part of the penile urethra is also stratified sequamous epithelium, while the major part before the glands, the lining is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Here also, the, uh, there is a mucus secreting gland, Nana Hadi, that line the penile urethra and help for mucus secretion and lubrication. Come to our lab. خلصنا the male reproductive system. If you have any questions, سمعوني لو لا تمام اقرأ الموضوع وإذا عندكم أسئلة تقدرون تسألوني على المحاضرة الجاية next lecture إن شاء الله الأسبوع الجاي راح نشرح عن الفيمال reproductive system